What's going on everybody? Welcome back to a brand new video. Today we are going to be reviewing the Matthews Tyler. Okay, so honestly I'm excited for this video because I have tried to make this video before, a few months ago, and I didn't, I guess you could say I didn't finish it because uh, I'd only had maybe a month, a little bit less than a month of uh, shooting with this bow particularly. So this right here is the Matthews Title 28. Um, kind of get it in full frame. This is this is what we're running. So let's uh, let's go into more details on what our actual specs are: uh, draw length, uh, let off, scope, bars. Let's go in on all of that. Okay, so starting off, let's go off with the stabilizers. Um, we are shooting the Ramrod XP. I know they're back or well upside down on this, but we're shooting the Ramrod XP, the 27 inch front bar. As you can tell, we've got um, we've got around 10 ounces up on the front, and then on the back we've got the Ramrods. We've got two Ramrod 15 inches. We've got um, four, six, eight. 10. We got 11 ounces on the right side one, and then we have got just a couple. I think we've got we've got six on the other side. But we're running the shrewd, the V bar mount that they have, and then we've got the the Bomar grip tape. We've got the Hamski Epsilon, which is a slick little uh, little rest. And then let's see. We have got the the Excel Achieve. XP 1.5, I think. I think that's right. And then we have got the Shrewd Optum 35 lens or 35 millimeter scope with a six power lens. In currently, we started out with an eight power, but went down to the six power before uh, Fort Benning. And then for the light, we are running probably the best light on the market, and that is a ETAC light. Uh, this is personally my favorite light that I have ever ran on a bow. And also, we have got this out on the side bracket. The Titles has got the thing for the dovetail to go inside the riser. But for us, we could not get our scopes to come over for enough to be able to run that. So now for our draw length, we are shooting a 27-inch uh, draw length, we are shooting 60 pound limbs, we are shooting 80% let off, and I would say we're holding around 13 or 14 pounds of holding weight, maybe. Oh, also, I forgot to mention, we are shooting the Hamski Peep with a C clear, no, with a, yeah, C clarifier, that's what we're running, is a C clarifier. Uh, with our six power uh, lens from Shrew. So that right there is pretty much the basic specs um, of what we're running and how we're shooting this bow. So now let's get into a, a few more things. So uh, one of the reasons why I feel that I can make this video now is because I have shot tournaments with this bow and then I have shot uh, a, a lot of practice rounds here at the house and just you know I've shot a lot of practice rounds through it I've shot a bunch of arrows I played with a bunch of different things um, so I kind of I feel like that I've got a pretty good grip on how this bow shoots and how it feels um, currently, I'm pulling up from precision cut archery where I need to scroll my sight to be able to hit dead on at 30 yards. We can make a whole separate video about that. If you guys would like to see that, let me know in the comments. So at 30 yards, we got to roll my sight to 
first shot of the day was almost to upper 12 barely missed it so we're gonna be having a few more videos come out here soon uh, discussing this bow and the Matthews lift so stay tuned That should be money. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that that's money. So, okay. Let's, uh, I'm really not sure where to start with this bow. I guess let's go to, uh, let's rewind it all the way to the start and describe what we had struggles with, um, what we, you know, what went smoothly. Because let me tell you something, there's definitely some times that we had struggles with this bow. Uh, I did personally, and it might have been just a me thing. It might have been just the, I don't know. It might have just been really one of them learning kind of curves and experiences with this bow. So let's uh, turn off the light, set the bow down, and let's get into it. So one of the things that personally that I found to be a struggle with with this bow was to get it to paper tune to go tip triple X's. Now obviously, I'm not saying it's hard to tune. That's not what I'm saying. I personally struggled with getting it to tear to a bullet hole. That was just me. I personally struggled with it. Um, I fit with it for honestly quite a few days. I would say around about three days I fit with it just trying to get it to tear that bullet hole and to for me to feel confident in it and I got it as close as I possibly could with everything that I knew to do with uh, getting help from others who has a title already and just following kind of what they were saying and i done all that stuff and I finally got it to where it's pretty much shooting a bullet hole but it was still rough because it still took like three days to do it so that was probably just uh, the inexperience from me you know not having all the experience in the world like a pro does or something so one of the things that with this bow I bought a bow press so I could learn how to work on my bow how to tie the, the D loop had a type peep, all that stuff, because to be honest with you, I really didn't know how to do it until I got this bow and started working on it completely myself. Let's go over uh, the tournaments that I've shot, indoor rounds that I've shot. I've shot two national level tournaments. One was NFAA, indoor nationals, I shot it. And then the next weekend, we went to Fort Benning, Alabama, or Georgia, whatever you want to call it, and I shot that ASA there and I think it's only due or I think we're only and I think it's only fair to you guys to describe how I thought the bow shot and the bow felt and and honestly I cannot say that I'm disappointed if anything I was blown away actually um, I was blown away and I really ain't never felt like I have shot a bow as good as I could shoot this one but we're also going to be fixing a few little details here and there. So, and that's, and we're going, to, we'll get into that in just a second. So, when I shot indoor nationals, I did not know what to expect of myself. I didn't know what to expect for my scores. Uh, I really had no idea, to be fair. Um, I didn't know if I would shoot a winning score, or I didn't know if I would completely suck and then blow up. I had no idea. I know that before the indoor round, the NFAA Indoor Nationals, I know that I was shooting here at the house and the bow was shooting good, it was shooting great. Um, I was shooting pretty good rounds here at the house, here and there, some rounds wouldn't be good. But then we went down to Indoor Nationals in Louisville and shot day one and day two and needless, can I, needless to say, I was super impressed with how the bow shot and then the next weekend we went down to uh, Fort Benham 
and then we shot that shoot. I did not shoot in the rain, actually. I shot both rounds on Saturday, and Saturday morning went terrible. My sight needed about five clicks to the right, thought it was me, and I held off on moving the sight. So that kind of sunk me into a hole. Like I kind of dug my own grave at that first, by that first round. And uh, there was a lot of shoot, there was a lot of arrows that the up and down was perfect, but my right and lefts was terrible because of me not moving my scope. I would have had so many more points and I wouldn't have had the bad score that I did. And in the second round, but about halfway through that first round, we moved my scope, I moved my scope about five clicks to the right, and then it kind of balanced everything out. And I shot the second round, and I shot pretty good. I was happy with it from what I had shot that morning. I was happy on how my shots felt and how everything was shooting with that bow, how I was holding that bow, uh, how my executions was. All my executions, even on a bad round, was still good. And that's exactly what I was aiming for for Fort Benning, was just to have good executions and really no bad shots so that's all i could ask for no i am not sponsored by matthews this video is not sponsored by matthews i am not paid to say what i'm about to say but i believe truly that if you want to shoot the best target bow on the market and you're looking to buy a new bow you will not be disappointed with buying the title it's just my opinion, just an opinion. So for everyone, you know, all you uh, diehards for a different bow brand, just remember, it's just my opinion, you've got yours. But don't settle on buying a new bow until you at least try this thing out. So. As much as I love this bow, everybody wants to hear what they don't like about the bow. And as much as I want to tell, the, as much as I'm going to tell the truth, most of y'all won't believe me when I say this. Um, because I'm not a pro, I am an amateur, I don't know everything about a bow, but I do know when a bow shoots good and when a bow don't shoot good. I can tell the difference between different bows. I mean, it's just, you shoot long enough, I've shot at this stuff for a few years now, so you've learned a lot over the few years. But if I had to pick something that I didn't like about the bow, I don't think that I could find anything, honestly. Um. Some people can find these little nitpick stuff to say, oh, I don't like the bow because of this. I don't like the bow because of that. I personally cannot find something bad to say about the bow. I just can't. Um, the bow has a smooth draw cycle for a tournament bow. Uh, some people's like, oh, it's kind of got an aggressive draw cycle. It's a tournament bow, of course. I mean. Why would a tournament bow have the draw cycle of a V3X or a lift or a phase four? You know, why would it be so smooth? I mean, it's a tournament bow. <clears throat> so with that being said, I don't really know of anything that I can say that I don't like about the Matthews title. Um, you can go shoot it for yourself and find maybe that one little thing that you don't like. But good luck. Good luck trying to find that. So, now, here's some things that I'm personally going to have to change about my bow and its current state of shooting because of my personal preference. Um, number one being the holding weight. So, it's shooting a low holding weight, but it's so low that I'm also not really stable much back here like when I'm looking through my pen I can slow it down a lot but I can't slow it down enough 
if that makes any sense. I can't sew it down to my personal preference. Um, and I also want to try out just the heavier holding weights. So this ain't sponsored, but I did order the Isaac Bedford mods for the Matthew title. He also has them for the TRX, the second gen and the first gen, I think. So if you want to increase your holding weight, go try them out. Um, they're still being shipped right now. I haven't got them. Uh, hopefully making a separate video on that but uh but yeah and i need a few more ounces on my stabilizers and besides of that honestly i can't really say that i've got much to change about this bow so something that people also might wonder with this bow this new matthews title is is there any vibration when you shoot and simply to answer no because of number one these limbs right here that's got the rubber in between the limbs that's number one but number two is one of the biggest reasons why there is no vibration in this bow and that's simply because of these bad girls these ramrod xps with their vibro core technology inside these bars they they pretty much eliminate all vibration in this setup when I shoot my bow, the only thing that I feel is literally the shot process. There's no shoot and wobble. There, like when you shoot a when you used to shoot a bow, I've noticed that sometimes you'll shoot and after it goes off, there's a little, you know, there's a little vibration here and there. You know, it you you gotta know what I'm talking about if you shot some of them older bows, but with the new technology in this bow and with these stabilizers put together there's nothing there's no vibration whatsoever this bow is literally the most dead in hand shooting bow that i've ever shot and i shot a halon x comp before this i've shot the v3x before this with the target setup and with the target setup there was more vibration in that than they are in this and i shot the same bars but the way that both of these combines together if you put the ramrods with this title you will not be disappointed and i've not been disappointed yet and i know some will say oh but garrison you shoot for ramrods and this is an honest group this is an honest opinion if i didn't believe that i wouldn't have threw it in the video plain and simple um so if you want some good good affordable good vibration dampening stabilizers and i mean just all around top-notch stabilizers go to ramrods.com and check out the xps uh go check out ramrods and tell them that garrison huff outdoors sent you so All right, everybody, so that right there is it for today's video. If you guys like this video, give it a big thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button. We have got some more great content coming out for you guys, including the Matthews title and the Matthews lift. If you have not shot either of them bows, highly recommend going to your local Matthews dealer and literally just trying them out. Just give it a try. That's it. So uh, make sure you hit the subscribe button, turn on the notification bell, and the, so that way that you never miss a video when we upload. And uh, yeah, and uh, just remember, keep shooting your bow. Uh, and uh, have a blessed day. I'll see you all in the next one.